Welcome back to another reaction, everyone. Yeah. Uh, it is super late, and that's Evans. Dummy late. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's super early. It's 5 in the oh, morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> today we're learning about bananas. Yeah, I don't even know, man. Like, first thing I thought of was, like, uh, those bananas in pajamas. Legit. Like, I don't know what that actually means. You know what I'm talking about? That show? Youngster? You know, the blue pajamas and living what in a tree this? or some shit? Anyways, hey, if you liked the video, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Get us some more content that you would like to see. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So, here we go. What was that? What? <laughs> hey kids, do you like fashionable, high quality apparel at an affordable price? Well too bad, cause that's not what we're talking about today. I'm gonna learn you all a thing or two about the real Banana Republics. Bananas. Our story begins during the turn of the 20th century, in Central and South America. Agriculture's kind of a big deal right now, you've got a ton of little plantations all over the place growing bananas, sugar, pineapples, that kind of thing, and they're doing alright for themselves, no big deal. But then, refrigeration happened, and it changed everything. Because now, produce could be kept fresh for way longer in transit, meaning the fruit companies could suddenly open up their business to the INTERNATIONAL MARKET. It, their biggest new trade partner being the United States. This massive opportunity gave rise to three main companies, known as the United Fruit Company, Coyamel Fruit Company, and the Vaccaro Bros. By growing, shipping, and selling fruit, these three firms made just obscene amounts of money, a lot of which went towards buying out smaller family-owned farms and plantations. This allowed them to make even obscener amounts of money, until eventually Ooh, the only bucks. competition that remained was each bags. other. And then shit got real. The year is 1910. One of the companies I mentioned, Coyamel, Mel was doing most of its business in the country of Honduras when the president of Honduras, Miguel Davila, decided to give a land grant to the Vaccaro Bros in exchange for helping for to build some roadways. In doing so, they basically stole a bunch of Coyamel's potential plantations and gave them to a competitor. So Samuel Zamuri, owner of Coyamel, oh. said to himself, Dang, I hate those guys. If only there was some way for a guy like me to significantly influence the world around him for his own personal gain. Wait a minute. So he used a portion of his McDuck-esque fortune to hire a mercenary army, which he gave to one of his friends, former Honduran President Manuel Bonilla. And together, they overthrew the entire fucking government of Honduras. Jesus. Yeah. Should have called it Cuyamel. <laughs> anyway, Bonilla took power Fuck. and gave very generous concessions to Cuyamel and United. Do that for some fruit. But then America saw this, and they were like, "Hey, that's not very Banana freedom company, of you, young man. man." To which Zemery replied, "It's okay. We're gonna help this country succeed. After all, politics and business are essentially the same thing." Well, I suppose it's not <laughs> a place to be policing the governments of other nations yet. Still, though, maybe. Oh, also, also, Nanners. All right, I'm sold. Do what you want. So with their interests secured, the businesses continued to thrive and expand. But since they got cut so many breaks by the government, very little of their commerce actually ended up benefiting Honduras as a whole. In fact, the national debt of Honduras got so bad that the government ended up not being able to perform a lot of its functions. So in response, the three fruit companies stepped in and said, no worries, we got this, and decided to basically build the nation's infrastructure for them, including roads, railways, shipping lines, telegraphs, telephone lines, radio towers. They even switched the whole country off to the US dollar. Keep in mind, this wasn't out of the goodness of their hearts. It was mostly just to make their own businesses function more efficiently, but it was helpful either way. Anyway, now, not only did they have total power over their plantations, but also a monopoly over nearly every major industry in the country. Many other Central American nations soon followed this pattern, creating a corrupt sort of symbiosis whereby the fruit companies get huge tax breaks and land grants in exchange for a modernized infrastructure and payoffs to the rich minority. And so, the Banana Republics were were born. Sounds like a pretty sweet gig, right? And it was. For the upper 5% of the populations who happen to hold some direct share in the plantations or shipping lines. For your average Jose, though, life mostly consisted of working on land that wasn't even theirs in exchange for dirt poor wages. <laughs> So that's how things were for like a decade and a half. At some point, Coyamel was bought out by United, but then Zamore became the owner of the whole thing, somehow, and the Vaccaro company was renamed as Standard Fruit. Then one day, in 1944, the country of Guatemala had a democratic revolution, and the newly elected leader, Juan José Arevalo, wasn't happy with how the companies treated his people. So he implemented several reforms, like a minimum wage law and universal suffrage. And while the populace got a lot of benefit out of this, United Fruit most certainly did not. 
because more rights for their workers means less profits for the business as a whole. Then Guatemala got a new president, Jacobo Arbenz, and he continued these reforms. And United continued to get the metaphorical shaft until finally, in 1953, they decided to go to the USA for help. Oh, Eisenhower. Yo, what's up? This Jacobo guy, he's, he's making us pay minimum wages. Well, that doesn't sound very good for business. That's not all, though. He's also taking our unused land and giving it back to the people. Does that sound familiar? Oh dear, you don't think. By the way it's looking, Dwight, I'd say he's a dirty... Oh god. Collectivizing? No. Kami. Kami! Kami! Yeah, go get him, Dwight. <laughs> oh my ears. <laughs> oh, Holy shit, you actually did it. World Star! And from that point onward, Guatemala uh. was ruled by a series of US-backed dictatorships all the way up until 1996. This kind of situation happened in several other places and times as well, almost always driven by some combination of red fear and yellow love. I won't give any more details for the hey. sake of time, but that doesn't mean they weren't big deals. So you might be wondering, where did these companies go? Surely the clan of banana shenanigans can't still be around today. Well, that's where you're wrong. They're still in operation, just under different names. Standard Fruit changed their name in 1991 to become none other than Dole Food Company. <gasps> you know, when I was a kid, I used to play a lot Yo. of Super Bowl, Pineapple. And I used to wonder, what Pineapple kind of cool tired would you stick about. an ape in a ball for their own amusement? Pineapple well, rings. now I know. Those bastards. As for United, one day in 1976, their CEO decided would. he couldn't take the heat anymore, so he jumped out the fucking window. That's a real thing, look it up. Then some other guy bought the Jesus. company and renamed it to, drumroll please, Chiquita Banana. Oh. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the face who wants to as an innocent, fun-loving dancer slash fruit merchant is actually a ruthless tyrant who overthrows democracies and undermines basic human rights for her own profit. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Anella, and thank you for watching. Damn. Del and Chiquita. Well, I think hey, I learned man. plenty to that one. Yeah. I learned, man. You gotta... They need to start writing about that shit. You gotta go back to your roots, because at the root of the banana tree, there's a dictator. <laughs> dictator. Eisenhower's down there fucking up a, a Central American Whee! president. Just, <laughs> just right. flies off the chair. Oh. Yo, and business and politics are pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I did like that little, like, that uh, was smooth. where was he? That was smooth. I don't know if I can find him. Whatever. Yeah. That was Whoa. fun, though. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. So if you want to see, we're going to try to drop some videos, random stuff that we want to do, and come back to here since this is kind of what started a lot of our, uh, you know, pretty much y'all find it. And so we'll come back to it, but we're also going to branch off. It keeps us going um, until, uh, yeah, we take off. So. Yeah. Right. Well. See you.